this is a season finale for season one of the EITF project, everyone. It's been an amazing journey for Kartik and I, and I hope you guys have learned as much as we have. For this final episode, we interview Venkatraman Acharya. Venkatraman Acharya is a veteran in the banking industry in India. His banking experience stretches across a span of 36 years. He has served multiple organizations in India, to name a few, Karur Vaishya Bank, Axis Bank, Indusind Bank, HDFC Bank, and he finally spent about 16 years before retirement as the Executive Vice President of Kotak Mahindra Bank. He spent a bulk of his career adapting to the major changes that came along with digitization. For example, he saw the birth of online banking, and he was on the front lines as the head of the Fraud and Risk Control Unit of Kotak Mahindra Bank during the demonetization period in India. Okay, I know you guys notice a familiarity in his name. Yes, I'm proud to say that Venkatraman Acharya is my dad. I have had a front row seat to his career journey and Karthik and I both felt like you guys would benefit a lot from hearing him out. For the EITF interview, he talks about how to face new challenges, how and when to go in search of them, and how to build a career. He also talks about the three revolutions in the career space, industrial, informational, and social, in reference to how it affected the great resignation. The most important thing he says is to feel excited about your job and what you're working on. Acharya has been a manager for the better part of his career, so his advice to managers out there is invaluable. Karthik and I had a lot of fun with this one. I also surprised him by bringing up a childhood memory of his work and his reaction was priceless. For the budding bankers in India and in general for managers out there, this is a good one. Enjoy you guys and as always, leave your comments. Hey guys, welcome to the season finale of the EITF project and uh, this last interview, episode 10, is going to be an amazing one. Uh, this one is with uh, Venkatraman Acharya. It's a special one for me because uh, Venkatraman Acharya is also commonly known to me as dad. Karthik and I are extremely excited to do this interview with you. Pa. Thank you, guys. Uh, I'm also equally excited to be part of this project. All right. I'm going to dive right into the first question, right? So our first question, this is a common question that we ask all our participants. Uh, what was your first job? And what is the one piece of knowledge that you took away from that first job that you carry with you today? That was quite some years back. Uh, I started my first job in a company which was the distributor of motor parts. I joined a sales trainee come executive trainee. Uh, that was my first proper job because that's where I learned what is office decorum is, going to office in time, following all the office discipline, working in a team, learning from teams. What I actually carried from from, uh, my first job was that you need to learn from anybody in the organization. It could be your uh, senior, it could be your peer group, it could be your juniors, it could be anybody. There's nothing like learning from people that you work with. That's one. Second is that, I mean, you can't obviously keep waiting for people to do things for you, whether it forms part of your job or not. But I would say that getting down to the last level to understand how the entire process flows, I think it's something which is uh, extremely, extremely useful. And and the second thing which I learned was that if you do a mistake, I think you should raise your hand and be frank and bold enough to say that, yeah, I've done a mistake. Learn from your mistakes. Don't hesitate to accept your mistake. When you said you learned office discipline, the timings for the office and all of that, I think it gets lost in today's world when people are working from home post-COVID. Your office discipline changes quite a bit, right? Maintaining yeah. that discipline for yourself is just as important. As part of that, the next question I wanted to ask you was around growing pain points uh, across your career journey. See, I joined an industry which is which was laid down at the point of time that I joined. There was clear divide between the working class and the managing class. Managing guys who I mean don't really look at the vision of the organization from the same, I mean, they don't look at this vision through the same eyes. Uh, you learn how to manage different kind of people. Okay, that, that was one. Second is the time I joined, there was changes happening very rapidly. Uh, even in the banking industry, from manual to automated setup, from 
uh, relationship banking to acquiring customer through going out and uh, selling your product. I wouldn't say it was pain point, but yeah, it, it was throwing a big challenge in terms of managing too many things at a time. Yeah, I think multitasking really forces you to learn. Another point that I wanted to touch on was one thing that you said where the employees don't really have the same view of the organization as the managers yeah. do. I think that is another thing these days that companies are trying to handle is to communicate that better to their employees. So in this environment, right, like when your individual contributors or employees don't understand where the company is headed towards, what role does a manager play in communicating the vision clearly to the downstream employees? To me, uh, the industry that I work for, the most important component uh, for the industry was the customer. So as a manager, you can you can show it by practicing what you actually preach. You know, you can talk about vision statement, but explaining every word by word to it. But you need to actually stand up and show what you need to do to ensure that company achieves his uh, vision. Okay, so for example, a customer, how do you handle a difficult customer? How do you manage customer expectation? How do you kind of manage all that and still make sure that you deliver the highest standard of customer delivery? That's something uh, I, for every manager, they need to practice the uh, vision statement. They can't just keep communicating. They need to practice it. So every Every time they do it silently, it is uh, the employee also looks at, looks at you and understand that yeah, this guy is serious. He just doesn't only talk about it, but he's practicing it. This is one of my favorite questions to ask. What is the one thing throughout your career journey that you learned in the beginning of your career journey that you were forced to unlearn? Learning and unlearn, unlearning processes it keeps happening constantly. You know what doesn't work for me. I don't wait for months to realize that this is not worked and let's not do it. So it's very important for managers to know what is helping them, which part of the process is working for them and which is not working. Something that doesn't work today can work tomorrow. So you need to keep on evaluating it at various point of time. But one big uh, thing that I learned all through my career is that uh, don't allow problems to daunt you. Because uh, many times the problems, uh, the solution that you get from uh, the problems can take you far ahead. Okay, so look at problem, face it, okay? Don't get daunted by situations, tough situations around you. I, I used to, at various point of time, if there is something in front of me which is not working, uh, at that point when the, the particular process didn't work and it was creating problem, I used to get daunted. But later on, I realized that the amount of time that I wasted in uh, allowing that problem to stop me from going ahead was something which uh, was very uh, detrimental. Yeah, because when you do pre-sales and you're like, something doesn't work, I think a common phrase we use is, oh yeah, this is what happens when you do a live demo. So what's one significant turning point in your career that's gotten you here? I was uh, at the start of my career for uh, almost nine to 10 years. I was very happy what I was doing. Somewhere uh, around in 90s, you know, when uh, things were getting out of in every industry. Uh, I took that plunge of moving from my comfort zone to uh, try out something which a lot of people told me that it could be extremely risky for you. I took that plunge to move into a new generation private sector banking, you know, which was completely on to acquiring customers, not that you wait for customers to walk in. I got into a setup of designing different products, going out and convincing a customer. So banking those days used to be a very secured kind of a industry. So people said, you are taking a risk. You... I'm very happy that I took that decision because uh, it changed my outlook completely. I uh, started taking new challenges. I started learning new products. I started doing things which I probably wouldn't have tried earlier. It, it actually opened up a complete new personality, which was hidden in me for a very, very uh, long time. And I, my suggestion is that to every individual is that, you know, at some point you should move out of your comfort zone. No, and you should try things differently. It may work, may not work. I mean, let's talk about that a little bit, right? You said that you moved yeah. out of your comfort zone. We've just spoken in the introduction about the different organizations that you've served. Earlier on in your career, you have made that transition pretty periodically, changing different 
organizations. And then towards the end of your career where you retired, you spent almost 18 plus years in serving one organization, right? 16, 16 years, 16 years to be precise. Right, 16 plus years. What lessons did you learn when you changed different organizations periodically versus serving one specific organization for a long time? Yeah, it's a very, very interesting question because today you find guys moving industry overnight. You know, whenever I change, one, I I knew that I was not moving for money. I knew I'm going to get into a very exciting role. I knew that every new organization was giving me something new in terms of learning. It actually enabled me to handle a very tougher situation every time I moved. It also gave me the excitement of setting up a industry. Most of the time I have moved to set up business and I have really enjoyed, you know, at one point I moved just in two and a half or three years time. So people ask me why so soon, but I said, look, I'm moving from a well-set company to a company which is just starting new. So uh, being part of that company right from inception to taking it up to a level that you're dreaming of, this is very exciting. It should, it should give you a new dimension to your profile. Today, when I look back, I'm sure you have seen, uh, Nandini, you have seen it. Today, when I look back, the number of branches that you have set up, number of people People you have hired right from being the one uh, first employee to a position where you look at you know the yeah. huge uh, setup with so much of uh, pride i think that's that's something which is very big so i have enjoyed setting up businesses so i keep mentioning this in a lot of the interviews that one of the things that my dad ended up telling me was the moment you stop learning it's uh, time that you have outgrown the role and you're up for a promotion or you're up for a career transition. But that's from you, the employee standpoint, right? But how does it get perceived on the employer side? Like tomorrow you look at a person, you look at his resume, right? And you see periodical shifts and you've also seen mm-hmm. some long-term stability. Are you looking at the resume and thinking, great, this guy moved or switched roles because he wanted to grow? Or are you looking at him saying, hey, he was probably impatient and hence he ended up moving for the monetary aspects? Yeah, that's a very important aspect when you hire a person. You know, you would want to know whether he's going to be consistent. He's going to be there with you for a long time. Whenever I have hired a person and I looked at resume where person has moved quite a bit and I have questioned him more in terms of why he did that. And many times I have seen the guys have moved frequently like I did for completely new set of challenges. And I also looked at what have they contributed, even if they work for a year in a company, before I hire a person uh, for a certain position, I also do the background check on that person. You know, Clearly a person moving is not wrong. You can move jobs, but if you're moving only for the sake of money, uh, it doesn't really enhance your personality. It doesn't add value to you. But if you're moving for a new set of challenges, like I said, I was very comfortable, but I moved because I was very excited to set up business. So, and, you know, be part of that exciting uh, situation. You spoke yeah. about doing interviews and things like that. I mean, you spoke about looking for, you know, the reason why people are moving. How do you evaluate their reasons and their motivations in such a short amount of time interviews are not really long usually i have a short story to tell here when when i was little my uh, my sister and i actually i just realized that she was there too both of us were taken to the bank with you because you got a call in the middle of like you know us hanging out saying that you know you had to interview two people in the bank both of us went to the bank with you we were sitting outside waiting for you to finish your interview and we had our picks on who you would pick right there were two candidates sitting outside and we were like you know okay dad's gonna pick this one or dad's gonna pick that one and we had a you know different picks but so we were really interested in what was going to happen when you came outside and like you know we wanted to know who you picked on the car right back we asked you like who did you pick and you said no one you didn't pick either of them and first of all I think we were heartbroken because our choices were wrong but in general you know one of the things that I found very interesting was that you said in the interview you asked a question where the question was wrong and you were trying to figure out how each person handled it one person found out that the question was wrong and the other person didn't find out that the question was wrong but you ended up choosing neither of them because they didn't pass the interview they were not team players and things like that so how do you evaluate an employee's motivations in a short amount of time. Oh, I'm 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 so uh, surprised that you remember that incident. So, uh, going back to your question, interview is a very 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 interesting and serious 
process. Okay, every manager should be very clear about the interview process. To be the first uh, quality that I want to look at anybody who is entering into a new job. How excited? What is the attitude? You know, no job. I don't know about technology industry, IT industry, but to me, no job is uh, rocket science. You know, you can learn your way up very quickly uh, if your attitude is right if you want to learn like i said if you can learn from anybody around you how positive you are my first five to ten minutes i spend only understanding about the attitude of a person many times uh, i would have done mistake of not hiring the right person but that five or ten minutes if has not given me the right vibe i have actually not gone ahead with the interview because i to me i don't want to waste uh, my time in talking to a guy, giving him wrong hopes, doing interview for half an hour, then he really, he thinks that I have spent so much time, so probably he may get. Uh, if you have, if I'm looking at a person for a serious, a senior role, then obviously his market knowledge, his uh, achievements in previous organizations, those are things that you look at in a person when you are interviewing a person for a senior role. If you don't understand a question, raise your hand and say sorry sir i didn't understand can you repeat if you don't know the answer raise your hand and sorry i i don't know i have actually selected a guy who came to me and almost for first five questions he said he didn't know he said sorry sir i don't know but then i could see there was no fear in his uh, face his body language is very clear six question he answered correctly and then he said sir i want you to stop for a minute can you explain to me uh, the first five questions that you asked me i really like that idea. once the attitude is there i think uh, anyone can learn anything right so these days right so you hire a person and communication is important and the ability to say no you 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 spoke about that in the previous answer you join a company you are going into a room full of experienced individuals right people who have served the industry for like 15 16 years who understand banking at the top of their head and they are at the top of the game how does a new employee navigate through a room full of experienced people without him getting intimidated, but also him being able to put forth his ideas and thoughts uh, for a collaborative discussion. Like a person going for interview, I expect the person to prepare very well before he goes for a meeting. You know, At any level, I remember till I left, uh, I superannuated. Every meeting used to be, I used to prepare. Not that I was presenting, not that I was uh, kind of controlling the meeting. But prepare very well before you go for a meeting. Know the subject, know the topic which is going to be discussed. Do your homework do your research properly when you ask a question be ready for a follow-up question back to you not many times you may be heard you may raise a question but you may be brushed aside people may tell you that that can wait we'll talk to you later or we can handle it offline these are the standard statement which can come in a meeting uh, okay don't worry we can handle we can talk about it offline but don't get daunted by these uh, answers keep asking the right question you may not get a chance to uh, take it further but at least people will notice you that yeah this guy seems to have some point and we should listen to him so you may not be heard once but keep trying it keep raising right question uh, do your homework properly be ready for a counter question back to you and be ready to handle it. Be confident, keep asking right question and I think you will hit the nail at the right time. I think for me at least earlier on in my career, preparing would give me the confidence to ask the question. And secondly, for me, asking the dumb questions offline helped quite a bit. If you have a clarification to seek, don't suppress it because that's not going to help. I think what helped me at least to get over this was I had supportive ecosystems around me where they would openly tell you, hey, even if it's a dumb question, feel free to raise it, yeah. ask it, because a dumb question to you may be a valuable question to someone in the room. So Absolutely. I want to talk a little bit about the industry as it is today, right? At least being in the US, Karthik and I, we're noticing that owing to the latest inflation reports that are coming out, uh, we're definitely in the cusp of a change from a post-COVID employee-favored market to an employer-favored market right now. So, you know, we're definitely heading into what seems like a recession. What is one most important skill an employee should have to survive, say, a recession? Yeah, this uh, word recession is a buzzword today. In fact, we don't, I, we don't see it in India. But yeah, there are a few countries which are being talked about of being in a situation which can uh, lead them into recession. But the job market, I have seen uh, from time to time, the downtrend which has happened in 
job market. Not with particular reference to a recession, but I've seen it happening many times. 2007-8 when the Lehman Brothers crashed. Multiple times, there have been situations where job cuts have happened and uh, people have lost their job. Somebody who's doing very well has lost his job next day. My advice to every guy uh, who wants to counter a situation of job cuts or downsizing. You see, when the job cut happens, it happens at all levels. It doesn't happen at just the entry level or middle management level. Many times you'll find that even at senior level, there's a job cut. Okay. And in a situation like this, what can happen is that can you can do away with a particular person. Okay. You won't do a replacement hiring. You would want a person junior uh, to that person to handle the same job. My advice to people to handle these kind of situation is that be, I mean, the right word, I would say ambidextrous. Can you handle more than what is given to you? If do you have the quality of kind of handling uh, more than one job? And that's very important for you to display that skill. You know, one I've been telling, uh, I think to both of you, both my daughters that try to be indispensable, be multitasking, take uh, interest beyond your uh, job description, try to learn what other person is doing and give that confidence to the company that boss, don't worry. If you want me to have 10 hands, I can, I can do that. In a situation like recession, let me tell uh, both of you that I don't know about IT industry. Uh, sometimes people say that I, IT industry, uh, the retention of employees specific to a project. Okay. If a project is off, the employee loses it. But I would still believe that if a guy in a particular project is extremely intelligent, can handle multiple tasks, multiple projects. If not in that company, getting a job for him in a different company is not going to be difficult. Here. Understand the situation. There can be job cut. There can be salary cut. It, it requires a lot of maturity. It requires a lot of planning. And if the going is good, you need to also pre keep preparing for the worst thing to happen. So let me honestly tell you, you can't keep jumping only during good times. You also need to take a break and prepare yourself for the, the uh, difficult time, which is not seen, but can hit you any point of time. So I think what I get out of it is focus on growth, focus on learning. I want to take that topic a little bit further and ask about like, you know, we just went through what America called the great resignation. You spoke about the recession and companies wanting to keep their top talent. When, when you think about it in the context of the great resignation, right, where employees were, you know, quitting left and right because they were getting better offers, better work environments, exciting work environments. What do you think a company can do to retain their top talent? You need to understand how the businesses have moved. There have been different phases of every business, every organization, every business, I would say. There was a time, uh, you can you can actually call it three different uh, stages. One is that industrial revolution, information uh, revolution. Okay, so industrial revolution when you have no option. You have to keep working in the same company. Even if your boss is bad, you're not getting good salary. You are putting too many hours of work. The working condition is bad, but you have no option. It's a question of survival. The second stage uh, is information uh, revolution where you know, all these IT industries come, you become automated, uh, you move a job because you want a better standard of living, okay? You want to buy a car, you want to buy a house, there are options for you. Some, some company is giving you extra money because you want to buy a car, want to buy a, a house, you want to pay your EMIs, so you have moved. The social revolution, where people started looking at not standard of life, but the quality of life. Is my working condition good? Do I get right opportunities to deliver? Do I have challenging assignments? Do I get recognition at periodic interval? Do I get feedback? It's not that at the end of my 12 months uh, cycle, my boss calls me and says that, sorry, you're not good. Do I have right atmosphere to perform. These are the things that la last 10 or 15 years, guys are worried about, guys are looking for. In my view, people don't leave organization, they leave bosses, they leave uh, working atmosphere. It's, it's a very big challenge for the organizations today to, uh, to work on all these areas, spend that quality time with employee every time he, he doesn't do well. Don't only just keep patting him for good job that he has done, but give him right direction, allow him to grow, give him better opportunities, 
set a very clear career path. If you are a guy who are looking forward to going back to office next day, you will never leave that office. Today, the great resignations which people are talking about, whether in India or abroad or any other country, is only because the companies have failed in looking into these areas. I like the way you said the three revolutions and how things have yeah. progressed across these three revolutions. And I want to take this a step further, right? And talk about the fourth revolution or pseudo term, the digital revolution, where everything around us is digitized, software's automation, everything is changing the way we look at things. Let's talk about this from two perspectives, one from an employee perspective and one uh, the other from an employer perspective. How does an organization get ready for a digital revolution or a digitization journey? And two, what does an employee do in maneuvering through constant change. Keeping digitization aside, I think it's very important for every employee to uh, adapt himself pretty quickly to the changes that's happening around him. With reference to that, I think digitization is one, one area where which has thrown challenges not only to uh, an employee, but also to various organizations. The, the ability to deliver to a customer through a digital uh, mode is, is, is far reaching uh, for any, any company has benefited company greatly and companies are actually done very well who have adopted uh, digitization rapidly. Today's world, ability to deliver is extremely important. And uh, if you can do that through uh, uh, the channel of digitization, you need to keep uh, keep looking at how quickly you adopt uh, adopt. Uh, you need to uh, spend time, money on research, understanding what other companies are doing, what are the new products, new methods of customer delivery. Don't he hesitate to kind of uh, imbibe, uh, infuse that into your business process uh, quickly. You've done something today. You can't just keep resting on your laurels and say that, yeah, I think this is working fine. It's very important for companies to invest time, money, not only in uh, new projects, but also time time in training their employees. So for an employee, internal research, they should also keep looking at things very uh, with a lot of interest in the same industry, in the other industry. I think what you really wanted to say, and you were trying very hard to avoid this word, was don't be complacent. Now, just for the audience, my dad has always use that word when he is advised my sister and I, he always keeps saying, don't get too complacent, don't get too complacent. So like, you know, my sister mm -hmm. and I always make fun of him. So I think he tried to actively avoid that word as part of his answer. But that's what he really wanted. So they, they will many, and the, these guys will many times anticipate that also from uh, coming from me. <laughs> so they will say, yeah, you're going to say, uh, don't be complacent. So... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I want to circle back a little bit to one of the answers that you gave earlier, which was regarding feedback and getting constant feedback, right? How do you think an employee should prepare for a performance review versus how do you think a manager should prepare for, you know, to give that feedback? And in general, you know, to, in today's world, one-on-ones with managers are becoming, you know, a trending topic when you have these periodic or weekly or monthly one-on-ones with your manager, what questions do you think employees should ask to further their careers in that organization? Appraisal, while it can be uh, an activity, um, maybe a, uh, an annual activity that every company goes through, but to me, appra uh, appraisal is a, is a regular process. You can't, you can't surprise an employee at the end of the year. Appreciate a guy for the good job that he has done. Also give him the right inputs in terms of what he can do better. If there is a need Pull him up for things that he has not been doing us right. But this should happen at a regular interval. As a manager, you should spend that quality time with your, your reportees. Losing a good guy at the end, end of the year because you haven't given him the feedback at a regular interval is going to be extremely detrimental for you. If you have been getting the feedback periodically from your bosses regularly. This process of annual appraisal should be more of where am I heading? What should I do next? What are the new challenges that I have? What is that you have in store for me next? How do I prepare myself for the next job? You have to spend, you have to keep your questions ready around that year because you have got answer to everything else periodically. For a manager, his uh, appraisal process becomes very simple if he has done this regularly. Now, I don't know uh, whether uh, uh, there is a process of forced ranking in uh, IT industry, but it happens in 
the industry that I have worked. You might be doing very well, but you have uh, forced rank little down because somebody else in the company has done shade better than you. And that's a very tough situation for uh, both employee and employer to handle. But, you know, a, a manager has to keep those statistics and this thing very uh, clear in front of him to tell that, look, you guys have all done well, but there is somebody has done slightly better. And that's why he's, you should, uh, a manager who allows his employee to go back, go out of his room. I don't say happy. It's not always happy. You know, you may carry, but you're convinced about the outcome of your process. I think he's a good manager. It's a very uh, serious uh, process. You should not take it lightly. Employee should not take it lightly. Employee should not take it lightly. The manager should not take it lightly, but you have to distribute it during the year. I think the way I am interpreting your answer is, hey, the manager needs to set the his direct reports up for success. As part of this, I know we uh, hear a lot about this on LinkedIn and a lot of uh, articles being written about work-life balance, right? In your opinion, is there a sweet spot between a work and life? To me, if you're passionate about your job if you like i have said i've told you if you're looking forward to going back to office next day that itself balances out everything you don't need that break from your work because you don't want a break you are very passionate about your work but at the same time it's also important for family to understand that you are passionate about you so if you're able to spend time with your family also give that attention to your family not making them miss anything at the same time you're passionate about your job you're spending that extra time you don't need any any more balance here right? you don't need work life balance to me work life balances if you're passionate about you yeah i think i mean as a family the three of us have never really felt your like you know absence or anything when you've yeah when you've had a long day at work because in general i feel like you know if you are unhappy with your job from having you know looked at your career with a front row seat if you are if you have been unhappy with your job with your job you've taken that risk to move organizations to you know rectify that situation so we've never really missed you in that sense and i think if you like your job you will have enough time to take with your family as well but i also think that you know in terms of understanding there is a specific element that comes from the family as well like for example yeah, yeah. like you know when you have had long days at work mom has been there explaining things to us that's why i think family the support of one's family even for me in general support of all of you guys to you know egg me on to move forward and things like that has always been important you know that's been a really really great interview i think we've hit a lot of like you know later topics and karthik and i do ask one question at the end of every interview and this is something that's important to us how would you define success different people look at success from different viewpoint but to me success is uh, not money success is not power every company that i have worked if i am looked at by my uh, employees as a person who can add value to his daily life uh, his uh, inputs now I can give right input. If my company has trust in me, my bosses have trust in me, I may not be uh, successful all the time. I may not be uh, hitting my targets all the time. But if I'm being looked at by my company as someone who can take up um, uh, extra responsibility, who can be trusted, more importantly, trusted for any assignment, any job, I think that's something which is a measurement of success. Okay. If, if your company remembers you like today i can say that i worked in banking space for 36 37 years but even today when people call me when when i call them and they uh, they talk to me with the same respect they recall all the contribution that i have made i think that's my success success is how you derive satisfaction in what you have achieved oh, that's brilliantly said i think that's a unique perspective on what success means yeah, yeah. i think you know, in general, through the EITF project, Karthik and I have heard a lot of unique perspectives for what it means to be successful. And, you know, I'm, I'm still not there in trying to define what it means for me because it keeps changing every time. But I think it's definitely been something that I will imbibe into my own career. Thank you so much for coming on to the last episode of the EITF project. I think this has been great. Um, I hope our audience uh, loves it too and uh, you guys can give your feedbacks and comments as usual and if you guys ever want to reach out to us and reach out to any of the experts that we have spoken to throughout this project feel free to do so and Karthik and I will definitely do our best to connect you guys thank you so much Deb. thank you
If you like that video and you want to see more of us, follow us on our LinkedIn page at the EITF project. Click the follow button and you'll get more updates when we post more videos.